Welcome to the Bullock Museum's Little Texans program. We're sorry that we're not with you in the museum today, but thank you so much for joining us for this video. My name is Jessica and this is my son Julian. And today we're gonna talk to you about cameras and photography. And we're gonna learn that you can take something totally ordinary and when you point your camera at it a different way, maybe getting a little closer or maybe getting a little further or maybe changing the way you're standing, you can turn something totally ordinary into something extraordinary that maybe somebody would wanna hang on the walls of the museum. So to get started today, let's warm up with a brand new song. It's called, Let's Take a Picture. And we're gonna sing it through three times. So I think you're gonna get the hang of it. But parents, we put a link to the words um, under this video. So if you wanna go ahead and pause us, take a minute, you can go and get the words and come back. So we'll wait and we'll be here waiting for you when you guys get back. Ready? Okay, let's get started. One, two, three. Let's take a picture, you and me. Look at the camera, one, two, three. Let's take a picture, you and me. Look at the camera, say cheese. Now let's do a smiley face. Cheese. Let's take a picture, you and me. Look at the camera, one, two, three. Let's take a picture, you and me. Look at the camera, say cheese. Now let's make a silly face. Laugh. Let's take a picture, you and me. Look at the camera, one, two, three. Let's take a picture, you and me. Look at the camera, say cheese. Now let's make a scary monster face. Ah! Let's take a picture, you and me. One, two, three, say cheese. Awesome! You guys sounded so good. Thank you for singing that song with us today. The next thing I want to show you is a photograph that I've taken from the museum. This was from an exhibit that used to be in the museum before it's closed called This Light of Ours. And I'll move it close so you guys can see it really well. Very good. I know a lot of you have had a chance to see this exhibit in the museum and I'm so happy for that. If you haven't had a chance to look at the exhibit, we are going to put a link to some information in the, the area below the video. So you can click on that. You can see some more photographs from the exhibit and you can also learn a lot more about it. So I encourage you to do that. But for today, I wanted us to take a look at this picture and think about it a little bit. So Julian, why don't you help me? What do you think is happening in this photo? Um, so one boy is shaking the tree and one boy is trying to hold on. So maybe they're like playing hold on to the tree. Oh, that's a good guess. Yeah, it looks like they're definitely playing. Maybe they're playing hold on to the tree. What do you think they're feeling in this picture? Happy. Yeah, how can you tell that they're feeling happy? Because his face is happy. His face is happy and they're jumping around and they're playing. They've got to be happy, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, well, let's think about the way that this looks. Where do you think the photographer was standing when he took this photo? Down below, because you can kind of see that they're kind it looks like they're kind of touching the grass, but really they're like in the air. Yeah, that's a really good comment. It looks like the grass is really close and it kind of looks like they're in the air at the same time. So I think you're right. I think the photographer was really low and looking up at the scene. Um, what we're seeing is that the photographer did a really good job creating a really fun and interesting photo. He got really low, he was kind of at the side, and he captured kind of this magical moment when the boy is just in the, the middle of a swing. We know in the next moment he's probably going to swing backwards. And the boys are having so much fun in the way that their faces look and the way that they're 
seem to be moving across this scene. It's just a really beautiful dynamic photograph and it's a special one and that's why it's hanging up in the museum right now. Mm -hmm. So this is great. What a great example of a photographer doing something interesting so that a photo looks special and new and interesting to us. Thank you so much for sharing that with me. Um, the next thing we're going to do is watch a very cool video. There's a photographer named J.B. Sauceda, and he decided to get in an airplane and fly a mile above Texas and look at the border of Texas from the air. And he thought maybe it would be a neat way to see Texas from a new point of view. My brain has always just been wired to take opportunities when I see them. That is what my career as a photographer was made of. In 2014, I got my pilot's license. I just thought, man, it'd be really interesting to shoot the whole border of Texas from a plane and uh, do sort of a, a quote unquote, you know, flight around the world. There's this story to be told around it being this massive border and the diversity of the geology of our state, like that is what makes the project, you know, unique and interesting. Being a photographer is a practice in learning how to accumulate tools. On the ground, I had that tool set, but in the air, things were a lot different. You do learn a lot about the limits of your equipment and timing and how to configure your flight in a way to make sure you get the best shot. That was probably the hardest part about going up and doing this over the course of six days. There was something that was unique about flying around four or 5,000 feet above ground level. It was just this amazing experience to see people, you know, living from that perspective and blending of colors and changing of landscape, knowing that there was going to just be a plethora of really amazing things to see from that, that height. Wow, the photos that J.B. Sauceda took were amazing. Did you have any idea that's what Texas looks like from the air? Now, are you ready to take your own photos? Awesome, I am too. Let's learn a little bit about how we can take some beautiful photos. All cameras look a little different, but they each have a few things that are the same. They all have a lens, which is like an eye. It's a round glass window that is what the camera uses to see what you are taking a picture of. They all have a button, it's on top. You press this to take the picture. And on the back, they all have a viewfinder. This is a little window or it's a big screen and you look through it so that you can see what your camera is seeing. When you wanna take a picture, first think about what you wanna take a picture of. What is your subject gonna be? Do you wanna be close up or do you wanna be far away? Do you want to show it from above or below? What do you think would be most interesting? Okay, now you are ready. When you pick up your camera, make sure you keep your fingers away from the lens. You don't want any pictures of your fingers. Julian is gonna take a picture of this yellow flower. This is going to be his subject. He's decided to take his picture down low so that he can get close to it, but he's gonna stay about one arm length away from it. If he gets too close, his photo will be blurry and hard to see. When you look through your viewfinder, you want to fill it with your subject as much as you can. Try not to have other things in the window. We call this filling the frame and it helps you get very beautiful and simple photos. Now it's time to press the button. How does your photo look? Why don't you try it again, now from up high? And then take it from another angle. If you don't like the way it looks, try something different and see if you like it best from a new way. Now, keep practicing, take lots of pictures,
and try to show something ordinary in a fun new way. So now that we know all about taking pictures and photography and cameras, I thought it'd be fun if we make our own cameras together. So here's what you're gonna need. You want some paper or some foam or cardboard. You want a pair of scissors, a hole punch if you have it, some glue, and some items for decorating like crayons, markers, colored pencils. I've got some stickers. If you have glitter or stamps, that would be great too. And the last item you need is a piece of ribbon or string. And to get started, you just cut a rectangle from your paper. I cut mine in advance and I'm gonna use this sparkly scrapbook paper. This is gonna be the body of my camera. Next, I've got a circle that I cut. This is gonna be my lens. And the last piece I cut is a little square or a rectangle. This is gonna be the button for your camera and it goes on top. So you take your glue and your circle and you put lots of glue on the back. I really like purple glue stick but if you want to use white craft glue or a piece of tape, that's great. You're going to take your glued circle and you're going to put it right here on the camera body. I'm going to push it down really hard to make it stick. Then I'm going to take my square for the button. I'm going to put a little glue on the front of it because I want it to look like it's peeking out from the back of the camera. So I'm going to put it right there. The next thing you need to do is cut a rectangle for the viewfinder. I did this in advance because it's a little tricky for me, but I thought I would share a trick about how I was able to get a nice rectangle cut on the inside of my camera. And how I started was I drew my rectangle on the paper and then I folded the middle of the rectangle down and that let me take my scissors and cut right here on the fold a couple little snips. And that's a great way to get your scissors inside of the rectangle that you wanna cut. It makes it a little easier and a little cleaner looking. Next, I take my hole punch, or you can use scissors, and I punched a little hole in the side, just like that. That's where my camera strap's gonna go. However, if you don't wanna punch a hole, that's fine too. This camera right here is one that my daughter made and she just cut a beautiful piece of paper and she taped it to the back to make her next strap. So that's a great way to do it too. But I've got holes, so I'm gonna take my ribbon and I'm gonna thread it through and tie it up. And at this point, you can decorate your camera. I like mine kind of plain, so I'm not gonna do much more to it. But if you want, this is the time when you take your glitter and your stickers and your markers and your crayons and decorate it however you want. The cameras on the wall behind me are all cameras that my kids made. And what they found is they really liked using plain white computer paper because it let them get really creative with the colors they could choose and the designs they could make. So um, that is a great material for camera making. All right, I have got my camera. Now that I have this all made, I thought it would be really fun if we all went and took pictures with our cameras. So I made a scavenger hunt. It's in the link that's below this video. And it's got pictures of things we want you to find and there's a little checkbox next to it. So when you find the item and you take a picture, check it off and then move on to the next item. Now, if you want, you can take this camera and you can take an imaginary picture in your mind as you look through the viewfinder. You could take a real camera or you could even take a sketch pad and use the tips that we learned about how to take a nice photo and apply that as you sketch out your item. Do you guys remember what we learned about taking a really nice picture? Let's review it really fast. First, you're gonna identify what you want your subject to be, what you wanna take your picture of. You're going to think about the angle that you want the picture to be seen from. So are you gonna get really low? Are you gonna get high? Are you gonna go to the side? Then you are going to make sure when you're holding your camera that your fingers are far away from the lens so you don't get your fingers inside the picture. You're gonna stand about an arm's length from the thing that you're taking the picture of. And then when you look through the viewfinder, 
you're gonna fill the window with your subject. If you see there's little things in the way like grass or twigs, just move them out of the way and that will make your picture look a little cleaner. When you're all ready to go, you're gonna push the button and take your picture and that's it. Feel free to play around with this activity. Take lots of pictures from different angles and see what helps you turn that ordinary item into something extraordinary as you're looking through your camera lens. Thank you so much for spending time with us today learning about photography. We're sorry that we're not with you in person and we can't wait to see you in the museum again soon. If you wanna learn more about the programs we have going on at the Bullock Museum, please check us out at thestoryoftexas.com or on our Facebook or Instagram pages. Take care and we'll see you soon.